Think you know what a Volvo 340 looks like? This is what a Volvo 340 really looks like, because this is my 1977 Volvo 343. And in this video I'm going to tell you all about the first production year Volvo 343, and I'm going to show you all around my car. But first of all, before we do that, I need to teach you a little bit about the first couple of production years of the Volvo 343. The first Volvo 343s rolled off the production line in Bourne in the Netherlands in about March or April 1976. And there was a really short model year for 1976 that lasted until the summer break uh, of the factory. And I think I'm only aware of two cars which survived from that initial 1976 model year. When the factory restarted after its summer break in, I think, sort of August, late August, I'm not entirely sure, of 1976, the 1977 model year started in earnest. Um, and that's what this car is. It was a very early uh, in that production run for 1977, and it was built. I have uh, some data which shows me that it was on the production line on the 14th of September 1976, which makes it a very early example of the 1977 model year. For some reason, my car was not registered for another six months. It was registered in April of 1977. Um, my guess is that it would have been um, a dealer uh, display model uh, in a dealership somewhere in the Netherlands. Um, but in any case, it was, um, it was registered and delivered to its first customer owner in April of 1977. So although the uh, car was built in 1976, and I sort of think of it as a 1976 car for that reason, the fact that it's a 1977 model year leads me to refer to it as a 1977 car, even though it was actually built in 76. The main thing you'll note as I walk around this car is that the steering wheel is on the wrong side for the UK, and that's because this is not a United Kingdom car. Um, this is actually a Dutch car, um, but I went to the Netherlands in 2013 and collected it and imported it myself and registered it in the UK. Um, luckily um, the DVLA have given me a correct um, R registration number plate for the car, um, which is correct for its uh, both, it would have been R reg whether it was um, dated from when it was built in 1976 or when it was registered in 77. So, R reg is the correct registration mark for it. But the reason I had to go to the Netherlands to purchase this car is because I've never ever seen one for sale in the United Kingdom or in fact I don't even know of one that exists in the United Kingdom from this model year. I've been looking for them for sale, I've been looking for them on forums, I've been generally scouring the world uh, for these early cars for about 10-15 years I would imagine um, and I've never seen one so um, I really wanted one because they're so unique and I'll show you in a moment when we go inside and uh, I'll point out all the details that make them so unique. Um, I really wanted one so the only way I could get one was to actually go to Holland to the Netherlands where many more of them were sold than were sold here um, to buy one. Um, I don't have the exact figures to hand as to how many cars were sold from this model year in the UK. I think it was about 2,000 out of a 29,000 production run. The main reason why they don't exist in the UK um, anymore is because they're so bad. Um, the quality was appalling uh, and as a result they just didn't survive. Um, they were scrapped. Um, usually by Volvo themselves. Um, I've heard several stories that um, if they were traded in these early cars to uh, a Volvo dealership that instead of selling them on they would just scrap them. Um, and I've also heard a story that customers of these early cars were written to a couple of years later and offered to trade up to a brand new 1979 uh, model year car um, instead of their 77 with no cash to be added to it because Volvo I think was so keen um, to hide uh, their shame of the uh, poor quality and poor fit and finish uh, of these early 1977 cars. One of the most obvious things to say 
uh, as to why the 1976 and 77 model years were so unique uh, for the Volvo 343 is their general look and the fact that they look far more like a DAF than they do a Volvo and that's because that's what they are. Volvo purchased DAF in the early 1970s because this car was being developed by DAF. They wanted a small car uh, to be able to compete in that section of the marketplace and so they bought the company whilst this car was in pre-production, made a few tweaks, shoved some Volvo badges on it uh, and uh, launched it as the 343. But it is a DAF. The hubcaps are very DAF of the time. Um, the DAF 66 had very similar hubcaps uh, for their wheels and the seats inside, which I'll show you in greater detail in a moment, um, are DAF seats. They are not Volvo seats at all. In fact, the entire interior uh, is essentially DAF. And it's the DAF aspects of the car that Volvo very quickly tried to remove and delete as the model years progressed. All right, history lesson over. Um, let me show you around my car properly um, and talk you through um, all the unique bits that it's got um, and what makes me absolutely love this 1977 model year um, and why it's just so bad as well as being so good. Right, let me give you a good look at this interior. Um, the main thing to notice is that absolutely everything is brown. The dashboard is brown, the steering wheel is brown, the handbrake is brown, the gear selector is brown. The seats don't look brown, however, um, they are actually supposed to be brown. Um, the material, as you'll see, has really, really badly faded and torn. Um, it's just become sun damaged. It's a, a 1970s nylon and um, yeah, it's just in horrendous condition. However, a few weeks ago, I have managed to source some new fabric and here it is. This is my roll of correct fabric for the car and you can see uh, it's so much darker um, than what's on the car now because of the fading. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really, really ecstatic to have found um, this lovely nylon and in the next few weeks I'm hoping to remove the seats out of the car and have a go at re-trimming them uh, with this fabric. So it's going to look a million times better than it currently does. Almost everything in this interior is unique for 1977. Um, the, from the vents, which are so fragile, oh, I hate touching them in case they fall apart, um, to the light switches, which are a push type, push push. But can you see the whole panel is sort of rattly? And that's just an example. Like, see, look at that. Terrible. And the gaps, awful. Um, and that's just an example of the dreadful quality um, that gave this car its really, really bad reputation. The window winder uh, with its, look at that, with its square knob. How fun is that? That's unique to 1977. Um, and yeah, quality, here you go. The top of the door card is stuck in place with just two screws. Um, and I don't think they're supposed to be there. I think that they have only been added by somebody who owned the car because um, it flops um, like that. I've moved to the other side to give you a better view of the uh, driver's area and the dashboard. The steering wheel um, is almost unique for 77. I think 78 also had this particular steering wheel shape, um, but it was black for 78. These DAF tombstone uh, seats, um, they are unique for 77. Um, 78 onwards got Volvo seats with Volvo A pillar headrests. Um, let's move on and show you the rest of the dashboard. So we've got a clock, uh, which was made in West Germany, and that works. We have a very large ashtray in here and a cigarette lighter. Then we've got the heater and ventilation controls, which, I mean, look like a child made them, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> this is a fan, 
and it's on a slider. Uh, that's the maximum and that's off. Um, at the moment it's not working. Uh, I'm not sure why it used to work. Um, I'll need to I need to take the dashboard apart a little bit and clean up the wires I think. This one is the hot and cold again on a slider. Yeah. Um, and then we've got um, directions for the left and directions for the right. Um, whether it's to, I think, face level, uh, windscreen level, or foot level. There you go. Below that we have a radio. Um, I added that radio, it didn't have one. The reason I've added the radio is because the surrounding plastic where which houses the radio is completely smashed. And the only way of kind of keeping it vaguely intact, you see, um, is to have a radio in there to support the whole thing. Uh, and that's the, the main problem with the interior of this car. The brown plastics crack and smash. Um, there's something about the way they've been built or designed um, or manufactured that uh, makes them really susceptible uh, to cracking. Um, down here, the centre tray, it looks like it should be made from the same plastic as the uh, dashboard which is kind of kind of a hardish plastic um, it's not it's it's squidgy it's like a squidgy kind of rubber texture to it um, and you can see it sort of pops up at the edges and it's just really bad really bad over here we've got the glove box on the passenger side it does just about work um, it hasn't fallen apart incredibly um, I'm loath to open and close it too much in case it does but again you can see that the finish of the edging of the dashboard is just appalling in fact that's quite sharp <laughs> that plastic um, yeah not good and you can see that the glove box you know it's a lovely panel gap there and then it just kind of goes ah we can't be bothered to have a panel gap anymore and then we've got another one of these uh, very brittle vents over here, just about works. No centre uh, air vents, you'll note, uh, on a 77. Uh, they were added in 78, um, so there's no fresh air vents uh, for the driver, uh, which is very un-Volvo-like. The instrument binnacle um, is unique for 76, 77 and 78 model years, so it did last a little bit longer. Um, the dials are orange and it's backlit, uh, it's lit from the top, uh, again with a kind of orange coloured light. Um, it looks like it's done 20,000 miles, it hasn't, it's done about 120,000 kilometres, but as you can see the um, speedometer only shows either MPH, which is what this one does, or KPH. Then over here we've got uh, a voltmeter, a uh, temperature gauge and a fuel gauge, all of, who, all of which actually work. Just coming around the steering column and the steering wheel you can see how badly some of the black brown plastic fades because this part of the steering wheel should be brown, um, but it's not. Headlining is uh, unique for 77. I can't remember what 78 is like because I've not really been near one in the flesh. It might also have this headlining, but certainly 79 onwards doesn't have the perforations. It's much smoother. Up here we've got the driver's sun visor and the passenger's one gets a vanity mirror. I'm very happy to report that I've got correct uh, Volvo brown uh, speaker grills for my radio, which is really exciting. So let's have a look in the back and let me show you the 340 throughout its life had this lovely party trick, which is the way the seats tilt. So you uh, lift up this little uh, knob here, push the seat, and it tilts to the side. Isn't that awesome? To give you much more space to get in. It's so clever and I don't know why other cars don't do that. So the back seat is a very basic sort of bench. Again, it's really, really badly faded and sun damaged in the corners. Um, no seat belts. The British models would have had seat belts from new. The uh, Dutch models, uh, which this is, didn't uh, in the rear. We have on both sides a cute little ashtray because it was the 70s and this has clearly been smoked in because there's uh, some damage there uh, by somebody missing the ashtray with their cigarette end. It's got a couple of uh, grab handles here and here. Um, 
Mm, this one's a bit loose. Oh dear, I might just tighten that one up. Fairly decent headroom. I'm about five foot seven, um, and leg room is is all right for the a car of this age. One luxury feature that the 77 model year has, and others, the later ones don't, is uh, it has map pockets on the back of the seats, um, which no other 340s ever had. You can see in the uh, C pillar, that's the whole pre kind of semi-cut in the plastic panel ready to take the uh, seat belt if it was to have seat belts fitted. The uh, rear windows in the 77 do not pop out. You might notice a few mismatched things. Uh, the first one being uh, this part of the seat, um, which has got a black knob and some brown other bits. It should all be brown, but it was a victim of um, the brown plastic shattering phenomenon. So the brown knob, although I do have it, bits of it in the attic, in a little box, um, it's unusable, so that's a knob from a later car. Same with the floor mats, the rear floor mats and the driver's one are from a later car, um, but I have managed to get one period correct brown Volvo snow mat. It'd be lovely if I could get a few more of those. Something I haven't spoken much about in this video so far is the variomatic system. Um, so this car is a um, CVT, uh, continuously variable transmission. Um, it's the DAF system. It's absolutely bonkers when you drive it. Um, and if you see some of my driving videos of this car um, and the other variomatic, you can see um, and hear quite how nuts it is. It sounds like a milk float, I think, um, or a milk float that's revving its nuts off. Uh, more likely, um, which is a bit incongruous given that milk floats were electric. Um, so it's a very strange, unique noise. Of course, the uh, 343 was only available uh, with this uh, Variomatic transmission. Um, for the first three years, it was only for the 1979 model year that a manual gearbox was introduced. Surprisingly, for a fairly poorly made 1970s car, the uh, doors close with a remarkably um, solid sounding noise. That's not too bad. A couple of bits around the outside to show you that are unique for 1977 are the door handles. Um, it's the same moulding for later on, but in 77 this outside bit is all chrome, um, whereas every other model year after that they became black. A similar story with the mirrors. Um, they're chrome for 1977, uh, which is completely unique. Another th thing you might notice that's unique is the front bumper. Um, that is, uh, the number plate is below it. In 79 it moved, the number plate moved higher onto the bumper itself. Um, you'll notice, uh, if you're very eagle-eyed, that there is no um, hole there uh, with a bung in it for the uh, wipers, the headlamp wipers. Here is the one on the green car. Uh, so you see what I'm talking about. See there, that's where the uh, headlamp wiper would be. The reason for that is that on these super duper early cars, the headlamp wipers, if it had them, uh, which weren't standard, they were standard in Sweden, on the Swedish models, um, actually came out of a little hole here, um, and they were mounted there, and they were on a, uh, a stick, and so they just popped out across the uh, headlamp and back again, uh, which is awesome, uh, but sadly I don't have one of those. You'll notice that it's got um, headlamp beam, bem beam benders. They are now British um, headlight lenses. It's just that the um, reflectors inside just need to be uh, adjusted slightly and I just haven't got round to it, but I will do very shortly. Looking inside the boot or tailgate um, takes us to more unique 1977 territory in the shape of this rather awesome parcel shelf, um, which was deleted after this. The way that it comes out of the car is bonkers. It won't slide out. I think you've got to slide it forward slightly. Then maybe a little bit further back. There we go. Until you get a little bit of an angle to twist it and then you can take it out. Absolutely hopeless. You can really see the scratches on the trim panels uh, on both sides where Poor previous owners of this car and me have all struggled to get this damn parcel shelf back on. Um, there's an enormous panel gap there, um, but I do have these awesome um, Volvo boxes 
and there should be a third one that fits in the back there but I don't have that one it's missing um, but I think these are really cool um, they're very lightweight and when they lift out probably to put your shopping on um, the only trouble is same story as the rest of the car you know what I'm going to say they're really bad and they've cracked and they needed to be repaired because they're such they're really flimsy um, put anything heavy in them they'd smash um, here I've got the rearview mirror, the correct one for the car, um, that I need to put on. Um, the car will only start in either position P for park or neutral. Um, there is an inhibitor and it actually does work pretty well, amazingly, after all these years. There you go, it flies into life. It sounds really exhausty <clears throat> because the back box needs to be replaced. My favourite thing about the engine bay um, is this little oil uh, cover for the uh, oil cap, um, which is very daft. It's so cute. The main thing to say about the engine and the engine bay is that it's the original engine to the car and it's a B14.0, um, which is uh, has a terrible reputation for um, slightly uh, disintegrating. Another bit that's unique to the 1977 model year is the bonnet stay, which is a stick. Um, the later cars had an automatic um, little clip which you might have seen in some of my other videos. This bonnet is not original to the car because that is the slider for the uh, bonnet stay from a later car um, and actually if you look up here you can just about see that this bonnet is actually supposed to is actually yellow its original colour um, so it was added later. The air filter gives us a clue as to the car's real age because it says July 1976, so that's when that part of the car was manufactured. The air filter has a really cute little switch for summer and winter. You can flick that up for winter and down for summer. I've opened up the fuse box to show you this fun little detail, which is this relay here is a DAF relay. They hadn't bothered to rebadge that to Volvo. This car does have some bad bits. Um, this one being the worst and most obvious of them, which is, um, if I just cast a shadow over it, you'll see it's on the bonnet. Uh, and I think it must have been some filler on the replacement bonnet that was fitted at some point, And the filler is cracked, so it does look like a really ugly scar on the front of the car, uh, which is a shame. Uh, that needs fixing. There's also some lovely rust uh, down on the bottom of the front wing. Um, I think if I poked that too much it would create rather a large hole, so I shan't be doing that for the moment. These cars had a reputation for dissolving uh, in the early years. There's a rumour that the um, steel was recycled uh, steel, and so it rusted uh, from the inside out during this first production year, and better steel was used later on. Um, I'm not sure whether there's any truth to that, because quite a lot of the car is still really very, very solid. The rear wheel arches on both sides seem original and perfectly uh, sound. Well I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and um, this little tour of my car. Um, if there's anything specific that you'd like me to show you and have a look at then just comment below and I will um, I'll have a go uh, at showing you that. Um, over the next few weeks now that the car uh, is out of its hibernation um, I am going to do um, a few uh, improvements to it, a few tweaks. I've got quite a few parts um, that I need to fit so I'll do a few videos whilst I'm doing those so that you can join in on the fun of uh, repairing this 1977 or restoring it into slightly better condition than it currently is um, and also we've got the the seats um, that I am going to restore with that new fabric so um, I don't think I'll do a video of that but I'll certainly do a before and after um, so that you can see uh, I think watching me struggle with a sewing machine for days on end is probably not a fun video to watch but anyway there we go we'll leave it there I hope you've enjoyed it um, check out some of my other videos of my other cars and um, I'm hoping to be able to do a comparison video um, of early middle and later 340s very soon as well thank you